So there's the concept of the commons. This radio station and its frequency belong to the people of Kingston. And so bringing it back to the people of Kingston, giving the people of Kingston who didn't have a chance to have access maybe to being on the air here before is why we're doing what we're doing. And the end result is hopefully a city that falls in love with itself. My name is Jimmy Buff. I'm the executive director of Radio Kingston. I also host the afternoon program. It's called Jimmy Buff Loves You. So I have a great little jingle that says, Jimmy, Jimmy Buff loves you. And it's a reminder to myself to, uh, to act that way. That's yes at Radio Kingston and Starship Trooper. We are all made of stars. So we took over on November 1st, 2017. And by January 1st, 2018, we had gone from a commercial radio station to a non-commercial radio station. We had um, jettisoned two-thirds of the syndicated programming, which is programming that doesn't come from here, doesn't employ local people, um, and has no real value to the community, and started replacing it with local programming. And since then, we've added, my guess is about 30 different radio shows representing many, many different voices of the community. You're listening to La Voz. Estás escuchando La Voz. Sí, esto es La Voz en Radio Kingston. Soy Mariel Fiori. Estamos hasta las 12 del mediodía, de lunes a viernes de 10 a 12. Nos pueden escuchar. Y hoy es Día de Política, así que la tenemos a Ashley Ditus y también a Gladys Figueroa. Y estamos hablando de que este jueves son las elecciones primarias. Una de las cosas importantes aquí en la estación es que no tenemos que buscar ratings. Así que podemos invitar a cualquier persona que tenga algo que ofrecer a nuestra comunidad. Y la gente de todos los mundos walks of life. We can have here somebody who works a, as a dishwasher and we can also have somebody who teaches at Bar College or New Paul, SUNY New Paul or any new university. It's uh, something that Maria and I share because we think that everybody has a story to tell. Uh, we came on to the Lavaz radio station. It's a Spanish language um, informational segment that they do here in Kingston Community Radio. I, I don't want people to forget that there's an election. I want them to vote. I want them to exert their democratic uh, rights. Um, I think it's very important uh, to use all avenues of media to get that information out there to the public. A lot of our things that we have in print, that's all in English, so those voters are not understanding that maybe they don't read English, maybe they speak it limitedly. So to have an actual Spanish-speaking program locally and be locally based, that's amazing to me. And we didn't have that last year. It's a new program, so I'm really excited to have a partnership where I can reach another section of my community that might not know otherwise what is happening um, for our elections. In the past and in other stations around the area, they, they say they are local, but there's just a playlist and then maybe there is one host or one DJ per day and that's it. We are here all, every morning and every day there is a different host. So uh, we are really talking about what is happening locally. And last week or two weeks ago, we had all our guests plan out. We have uh, professors that they coming from local schools talking about literature and whatnot. And all of a sudden, a local pastor came in and said, hey, I have an announcement. Can I make it? If this was a playlist of songs, someone would knock on the door, no one would answer. But we don't have a playlist. We are here. So people come in and they, they make their announcements. And, you know, this is how a community radio station works. It's a radio show in Spanish. It doesn't mean that only Spanish speakers are listening to us. There's a lot of gringos, and that's in the good sense of the word, that are practicing their Spanish by listening to a radio show. And at the same time, getting informed, entertained, because... We have some music, good music too. We're funded entirely by the Novo Foundation, and um, they have made available to us resources beyond what a small city radio station usually have access to because the mission is what it is. And so we're able to function without compromising our programming for a fun drive. We're not worried about if an advertiser gets upset with something that they hear on the radio and they decide they want to pull their advertising and we have to respond to market concerns that way. We get to be um, as pure when it comes to broadcasting as we possibly can. Hi, I'm Freedom Walker. And I'm Beetle. And we are the Black Meta. No, no, th that was sarcasm. This is not a post-racial society. Anyone who says <laughs> that is probably a giant racist or a complete idiot. I'm sorry if you're listening and you think that, but yeah, you're either a racist or an idiot. We launched actually March. I've never done radio. March 6th. 
when um, Radio Kingston came up, when I went to their open house, and I, um, they were looking for ideas. So I came in there, I said, okay, I have an idea. Uh, but I'm seeing this gentrification happening, and I want to help in some way. Maybe I could reach out to the organizations that are here, that are trying to help people in their human resources, get together, talk about this, and come up with solutions and ideas. And the executive director, Jimmy Buff, said, hey, why don't you do a show? And then Julie Novak um, suggested that I would get someone to team up with me. So uh, we went to a TMI performance. Beetle and I, and then we said hi to each other, we were just talking, and Julie was staring at us, and I, I knew something was going on with her. So she suggested that, hey, I found your partner, why don't you two team up on the show? We wanted entertainment, we wanted to express our views, we wanted to get out of the box, and that stereotype. We also wanted to talk about things that the world thinks black people have no stake in, no opinion about. We think about existentialism, we think about the world that we live in and the particulars of that world. We find random things interesting. And like I said, we're not one note songs. I want to see the black meta develop more into like an information radio that people are tuning in and we're giving information, they're actually helping. But we also have to keep developing um, our relationships with the community. I've said it before, radio is like 98% awful, just badly done. So if you do something good in radio, it looks or it sounds amazing. You got to take the enemy's tools and use them and use them better. And I think we can. I mean, I'm pretty sure I can out rant Rush Limbaugh. It's kind of like taking back this country. If I can do it by taking a radio station or taking a medium, I'm going to do that. And I'm not going to stop there. So, you know, the people who were here before we took over are still here. When we first met Warren and we came into the radio station, it was a little like meeting the captain of a ghost ship. He was the only person here um, and doing an, a remarkable job at maintaining the radio station basically on little or no resources. It was just extraordinary. So what were you doing a year ago? What was, what was your life like before the station came into its current iteration? It was very quiet here. It was me. I didn't know where we were going. We were owned by corporate America, and it was really getting tough to survive. We were still making some money, which you had to do in commercial radio, but it was getting tougher and tougher. And uh, they, left, they left me here as the only person in charge. Radio Kingston approached them and wanted to buy the radio station, and they agreed for a certain amount of money. And the vision that Radio Kingston brings with it? The vision is community radio, serving the community and uh, many, many voices in the community. There's something for everyone to tune into and enjoy and learn from. So what's happening at Radio Kingston isn't taking place in a vacuum. It's part of a city-wide revitalization plan, at the heart of which is a comprehensive vision for the future that was articulated by the city back in 2015. To find out a little bit more and about the role of the mayor, we headed to City Hall to speak to Mayor Stephen Noble. All of these mayors have come from all different backgrounds, and, and many of them... Um, well, not that many different backgrounds. No, they're mostly all white men. <laughs> they're all white men, I can assure you that. So, a few years ago, you came up with, or the city came up with, a vision plan. Talk about that process, and what was, or what, what was that document about? We wanted to have a 10-year vision to be able to make sure that each of our neighborhoods um, would have attention, uh, that we would focus um, on our assets, and really be able to build a community from the ground up. As you drove down um, from the radio station, you'll see we had an uptown, a midtown, and a downtown. And I think one part of our, our comprehensive plan is to figure out how to stitch together our community back together again so that we are a community of one and one that really looks out for one another and can, if one neighborhood is doing well, the other parts of the city would also prosper. And what role does the radio station play? So one of the things that I've really tried to do uh, is to be able to get more residents connected to, to the city. And I think having a community radio station is vital to do that because unfortunately with all of the media conglomerates across the world buying up every little bitty radio station, uh, you basically can hear the same thing on a hundred different stations at any point in our country. And for us, we were going to lose one of our only locally owned uh, radio stations. And at the perfect opportunity, you know, Radio Kingston came to be. And for us, it's connecting a whole new voice to Kingston. Uh, folks who have never had a voice before now have an outlet to be able to talk about their issues, talk about their concerns, and to be able to have equal airtime 
um, you know, as everyone else in the city. And so as the mayor, I have Mondays with the mayor. And so I have a 30 minute block um, where I'm able to go ahead and talk about issues that are important to me. Um, but there's also every other organization and every group in the city that wants to say something has just as much time or more time than I do. And so that's something that is unique about community radio. And I think it's something that, you know, a small community like Kingston is really lucky to have. You have the unusual um, good fortune as mayor of having some fairly uh, well endowed people living in your neighborhood, meaning enormous philanthropists with the Novo Foundation and Jennifer and Peter Buffett. How do you think about that? And how should we think about what's happening in Kingston? Um, would it be possible without some large donors? So one of the things that I think has made Kingston unique is that, you know, we never really had the large foundations. We don't have the corporate entities. There was really not a lot of plan giving uh, in our community. And so Kingston has always had to, over the 400 year history, really be able to um, make its own way. And for us, I think, you know, using that funding to be able to create uh, an environment where the citizenry is engaged and the public can recognize that we kind of teach you a new way and then you'll continue to do that even if the you know the buffets aren't here tomorrow they're not necessarily you know building billion dollar buildings here in kingston but i think that they're they're putting their their efforts into uh, entities and organizations that care about people and i think that there will be a lot of dividends um, you know and i think that that could happen in any community first off why invest in a radio station. You two are not media funders, generally right. speaking. You right. don't have a chain of radio stations with nope. the word Buffett on them. <laughs> right. so, so why here right. in Kingston, Radio Kingston? Well, it really starts from the fact that we live here and we started to recognize what a, a special and, and typical, both, community this was. It's a town of 25,000 people. Uh, it has percentages of pretty much everything that any town USA has. And so as I started to think about our philanthropic work that we do here and there and everywhere else, I thought that by being here, I could learn more specifically about what it means to uh, move into a future that we're all hoping we can create together. And I wanted people in this community to be able to open their door and recognize that they belong to something and hurt each other, knew each other, wanted to nurture, each other together, take care of each other, whatever that is. And you can only do that if you're listening. I look at this station, and I know Jimmy does as well, as a, it's a uh, social good organization. It's, it's not a radio station, it's something else. The station isn't just about what goes over the airwaves. It's about the block parties. It's about being at City Hall and letting people know what's going on. It's, it's about these other ways it, it can put its tentacles into the community and, and be an amplifier of what's really already happening. So it's not, I'm buying a station somewhere so that it can survive and play things that are liberal. You know, it's no, we're in here to help sustain, build and grow a nurturing, loving place. We have an ecosystemic problem. <laughs> this is not, oh, if we could just fix this, everything would be right. No, this is complex and so we do, we look at food and health and education and energy and agriculture and all these different things that all make up this tapestry and the station, it's critical to the health of this place. Being funded the way we are, we have the um, sense of what life can be post-capitalism. People don't realize this, but in the first two Star Trek series with Captain Kirk and Captain Picard, both of them make statements about how somewhere in the 21st century, mankind decided that money wasn't necessary and that we worked for the good of each other. And maybe that happens somehow, you know? This is a, a little taste of that. We come in here and it's not about um, our salaries as much as the mission. I'm Jimmy Buff and Frank Goringer is coming along at the top of the hour. To